Hey, better sax players, today I've got a special treat for you. This is the brand new Roland Aerophone Pro. We're gonna unbox it. I'm gonna let you hear some of the new sounds and give you my first impressions of this brand new wind synth from Roland. All right, so first of all, I'm kind of surprised by the size of the box that it came in when the delivery guy came with this. I was like, how is that a wind synth? The box is huge. But check it out. It comes in a really cool case. Look at that. This already says pro instrument to me. You got a big outside pocket inside the pocket. You got your documentation and it looks like a cable, your warranty information. And now you got a nice storage pack. I could, you know, you could put in here some, maybe some pedals. You got shoulder straps on the back. This is something, you know, the, the other Aerophone, the Roland AE-10 has a nice case with it, but this one feels more like I'm going to a gig. Let's open it up and see what's in there. All right, now the instrument itself, check that out. The instrument itself is about the same size as the other Aerophone. I like the new color scheme, wow, so check that out. Black and silver, the key touches are black. It looks very slick, definitely has more of a stage look, more of a pro uh, visual to it. And something else to note, it's got these Velcroed um, pads inside the case. But it's definitely a very different design than the other Aerophone case, where it's like a snug, form-fitting thing. This is more like a soft case for a guitar. Let's see what comes in this box. Don't know what that is. You got a power charger, and in here you've got another cable, and it looks like a USB-C plug. Uh -huh. Oh, look at that. <laughs> this goes on the bottom. It looks like it collects the, sp the spit that comes out. So you don't have to leave a puddle behind you when you're playing. Interesting. Found one more thing in the box. This is like a thumb cushion rest. After that, you've got your standard mouthpiece cap, the same as the other Roland Aerophone, and your sweatband, wristband, protector, guard, that, you know, as you're playing, you can tend to have a moisture spit dripping down the side, and this is gonna protect it from going inside the speaker, from getting into the keys. Not the most elegant solution, but it definitely comes in handy. Now, in the hands, my first impression of this is it feels more slim. It's got a more slender design than the Aerophone AE-10 or the, the Go, and it feels a bit, so that gives it more of like an Akai Iwi feel. It's more streamlined. Pressing the keys down, there's that noise. I will say there is a smoother movement of these keys than on my Aerophone AE-10 already. It feels a little bit smoother, slightly less clunky, if that's the right word but there's, it, there's still make, they still make a lot of noise. It's not gonna be a problem because this is an instrument that you're gonna be playing in an amplified situation. It's probably gonna be pretty loud. Um, but yeah, you know, an Akai Iwi is basically silent when you move your fingers. That's anything but silent. We've got some knobs on here and turning this knob here this is already, this feels pro. I like the feel of these knobs. This is the sort of thing you get, you know, on a guitar, you have knobs, you know, and you have really accurate control. On all of our wind synths, we're always like looking at some tiny little screen and pressing combinations of buttons to change settings. So having real knobs, wow, that's, I'm, we'll have to see what they do, but I like that improvement. Next, you've got the headphone jack here on the side, then the output jack. Down here, we've got the spit valve. This thing here looks like you could put your cables in there. Yeah, this pulls out and then will hold your cables in place. Also something else, these palm keys and the side keys, looks like they've got a more robust design. They look like bigger keys. And that 
my first impression of that is that's an improvement. Like you can't miss those keys. They feel more like the keys on a real saxophone. You know, there's some uh, surface area to get your, your fingers on there. Okay, this unscrews and I open that up and you could put AA batteries in there. All right, so it looks like it's got both options for uh, battery powered, like the other aerophones, as well as it can be plugged in. A Bluetooth indicator light here, so this is clearly going to work. Bluetooth and this sort of a wheel, this is similar to the sort of a wheel you'd see on a keyboard. We've also got this touch here, the Aerophone Pro AE30. Scene category, one, synth hard lead, two, synth soft lead, three, synth pad strings, synth brass, bass, woodwinds, brass winds, strings, ethnic keyboard, guitar bass, voice, choir, percussion. Interestingly, I see the synths are listed first. Normally with these instruments, you're seeing, you know, the saxophones and the clarinets and, the, you know, the wind instruments, the synthesized wind instruments first, and you kind of have to scroll through dozens before you get to the synth sounds. Uh, this, the idea behind this is this is a pro instrument and really professional wind synth players are playing synth sounds. You know, you never heard Michael Brecker playing the saxophone sound on his iwi. Uh, you don't hear people like Seamus Blake playing, you know, the, the, the trumpet sound on his iwi. Uh, they're using sophisticated synths. And what I've been told about this instrument is it's got really great synth sounds, Roland synth sounds inside it, the sort of things you'd have on a professional level keyboard. They're built into the, the device, so you don't have to get aftermarket um, uh, sounds and synths to load in. You don't have to plug this into your computer or use some sort of uh, module. You can just have really good sounds outputting directly from the instrument. And this is something we've all been waiting for for a long time. The only synth, the only wind synth out there now that you can have sophisticated sounds inside the device is the Iwi uh, 4000, which uh, by Akai, which is no longer in production. Akai made a new instrument, uh, the Iwi 5000, and it, it took away that feature of being able to upload or to install sounds of your own choosing inside the instrument. All right, let's plug it in and see what it does. All right, now before I even play this thing, I'm gonna put a mouthpiece patch on it. I like to have a mouthpiece patch. That's really up to you. If you don't do that, this is just plastic, so your teeth are gonna dig into that. And I don't like the feeling of the plastic on my teeth. Ugh. I forgot, this thing has speakers on it. It's on. Let's see if I blow into it for the sound comes out. Whoa! Okay, yeah, it's pretty loud. Let's hear what, let's play it. Let's hear what it sounds like first through the internal speaker. I've just got it plugged into the power right now. Before I play, I put on a mouthpiece patch. I don't like the way my teeth feel against the plastic of these mouthpieces and they will make a mark over time, so. Wow, okay. So a bunch of things right there. That's the built-in first sound that you get. You get normally with these things. There's some horrible saxophone sound. The first sound is some like grungy, uh, distorted synth sound. This is just out of the box. I haven't touched a single button except play my middle B. That's what it sounds like through this external speaker. Now I'm gonna plug it into the computer so we can hear a bunch of the sounds properly. All right, so one of the first things I noticed just playing this thing, before I even get into the sounds, is 
you're, you know, you got these octave keys on the Roland Aerophone. They're similar to the other versions of this, but I'm finding these, you have to put a lot of pressure on them to move. They're kind of really resistant and stiff. Um, and I'm just trying to play uh, to go over the octave break here. <laughs> For the first octave key, it's okay, but it's kind of tiring for my thumb. Now, from going from this first lower octave key to the second lower octave key, that's where it's really a workout for your thumb. So already I've set this thing for the bite control to be E wind, which makes it work similar to an Akai Iwi, where if you're putting no pressure on the bite plate or very little pressure on the bite plate, you're just gonna get a note in tune. And then when you bite down a little bit, you get the vibrato or you get the, you know, the pitch bend. Default, it was set to sax, which means you can bend the pitch in both directions. So when you're playing with a set to sax, if you use a normal saxophone embouchure with a steady amount of light pressure, it's gonna get your note in tune. But if you drop your jaw, that pitch is gonna drop. So that's more like a real saxophone, but for me, that's one way I don't want my wind synth to be like a saxophone. You know, one of the benefits of playing this instrument is that it can always be in tune and you don't have to worry about, am I flat or am I sharp? Do I have to make an embouchure adjustment for every note? So this is, this is crazy. At first I thought this little thumb pad thing was just a thumb rest for comfort, but it's not, it does something. And I've been using it inadvertently since I started playing this. So when I press down with my right thumb, it adds like this distortion. I guess you can uh, configure that to uh, add something to the sound depending on you know what sound you're using. So on this one, it adds like a distortion or like a growl. So this is in effect a expression tool you can use to add some level of expression to the sounds you're playing. Cool addition. I like it. And this thing, as I thought, is just a pitch wheel like you see on a keyboard. This right here, this uh, knob, and I could quickly turn it twice and now I'm, I'm a B flat instrument. E flat to C here feels quite different. Takes some getting used to. Interesting, I think I liked E flat to C better on the other aerophone. Hmm. I still think they should have some sort of a roller between these keys, you know, that you have on a real saxophone between E flat and C, some sort of a roller, and even on these pinky keys to get to, so when you're sliding between them, it's more comfortable. This E flat to C doesn't feel great to me. I want, let's say I want to slide through the octaves on one note. It's not that easy. The idea behind this octave key is that you've got your thumb pressing down one, and then when you go to the next one, you're just adding it. You're not really shifting your thumb from one octave key completely over to the next, as you would, let's say, on the Kai Iwi, where your thumb needs to be in an exact spot for each octave. On this, it's like, I'm gonna play this octave key here, and then I'm going to add that one to it. 
same down here. I'm going to play this lower octave key and then kind of pivot my thumb, similar to what you would do on a, a saxophone. I'm going to pivot my thumb to get that lower octave. I still think these, um, you know, these secondary octave keys are way too uh, resistant. One thing I have to say, so this thing here has been collecting all of my spit. I'm going to keep playing for a while, then we'll see how much is in there. But I like it because normally when I, I often play this and I'm resting it on my knee, like I am now. And what ends up happening is I just get a puddle of, you know, I get like a big spit stain on my clothes. We don't want that. So far, this might be the best, the best improvement on this. Uh, funk trumpet. What does a funk trumpet sound like? I like the funk trumpet. Okay, sometimes I find myself pressing, squeezing a little bit and activating this, you know, this thumb key the expression, which adds distortion often. So it's cool. You just got to get used to the fact that keep your thumb relaxed. As soon as you squeeze a little bit, it adds that. It's pretty subtle. You don't need to squeeze very much to activate that. I wonder if that's um, something you can adjust. Interesting one. Overblown. Pretty cool. Simple square. Cool. Lyrical lead three. Yeah, all of these are kind of usable, you know? LM squares. Attack lead. Empty stacked fourths. T-stacked fourths two. And another one. I love it. Harajuku lead. Cosmic lead. Love it. B soft lead two. Synth oboe one. Uh oh. 
<laughs> Actually, pretty cool. Synth oboe one, synth oboe two. Forest flute. <laughs> Cool. Trio lead. Late shift. Synth recorder two. Synth recorder four. Usable triangle lead. Interesting. Square lead. lead okay warm saw lead a e lead one aerophone lead one so that's it for this video listen i just got this instrument today i wanted to quickly produce a video for you to give you a first look. That's all this is. I'm going to spend a lot more time playing with this instrument, getting used to the sounds, uh, getting used to the little differences, and then I'll come back and make another proper review after having spent some time with this. I did want to mention that I have not been paid by Roland to make this video. They did send me this pre-production model so that I could show it to you, but they have no influence on what I'm saying. These are my own honest thoughts and first impressions. Anyway, there's certainly a lot more to explore with this instrument going forward. I will be producing some more content with the new Aerophone AE30 in the near future. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.